Hey y'all, it's Miss Flores. So today we're going to be doing uh, our first part of our quarter one test review. So this is going to cover a bunch of questions, uh, 20 questions over things that we've learned all quarter. So I'm going to go through five questions with y'all and then you'll have 15 minutes, 15 questions to do on your own, but we'll review some of those when we meet back together as well. So let's look at number eight first. So number eight says that Janice wrote the following expression. What is the value of the expression? So this is just a PEMDAS problem, right? So we're going to do parentheses first. We don't worry about exponents. Then we multiply and divide from left to right. Then we add and subtract from left to right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do my parentheses. I've got parentheses right here, right? I've got that 16.5 minus 4. So I'm going to do 16.5 minus 4. So I need to add a decimal to that 4, right? If I'm adding or subtracting with decimals, everything's got to have a decimal. So my decimal in my 4 goes to the right of my 4, right where that green dot is. So I have 16.5 minus 4 point. And I'm going to add a 0 in that blank space to have a placeholder. So now I'm going to subtract. Double check that my decimals are all in a line, right? And then do 5 minus 0, which is 5. 6 minus 4, which is 2. And 1 minus nothing is 1. So I get 12.5. So now my parentheses are 12.5. So now I bring down the rest of my problem. I've got 7 plus 12.5 divided by 5 plus 3.4. So I've done parentheses. Now my next step would be multiplying and dividing from left to right. Well, the only multiplication or division I have is this division symbol right here. So I'm going to do 12.5 divided by 5. So let's do that. 12.5 divided by 5. Well, 5 can't go into 1, but it can go into 12, right? 5 goes into 12 2 times. 2 times 5 is 10. I subtract and I get 2. So 5 can't go into 2, but it can go into 25. 5 goes into 25 exactly 5 times. 5 times 5 is 25. I subtract and I get 0. So I'm done with my division, but I've got to take my decimal, move it straight up into my answer, and I end up with 2.5 as my answer. So my 12.5 divided by 5 ends up being 2 and 5 tenths. And now I'm going to bring down the rest of my problem. So I've got 7 plus 2.5 plus 3.4. So now I don't want my multiplication and division from left to right, so I'm just going to do my addition and subtraction from left to right. So I'm going to do 7 plus 2.5 first. Well, if I did that, 7 doesn't have a decimal right, so if it's out of sight, it goes to the right. So it would be to the right of that 7. So 7.0, 7.0. Plus 2.5. And that gets me 9.5. So now I've got 9.5 plus, bring down my 3.4. So I'm going to add those two together as my final step. Well, 9.5, let's do it over here. 9.5 plus 3.4 gets me 12.9. So 12 and 9 tenths would be my final answer. Let's look at our next question. Let's look at number 11. There are 238 skiers waiting to use a chairlift when a ski when a ski slope opens in the morning. Each chair seats four skiers. About how many chairs will be needed to take all the skiers to the top of the mountain? Choose the best estimate. So let's think about this. We've got the total number of skiers, right? And we have how many skiers can fit on each seat? We got four skiers. It says about, right? And it says estimate. So that means that we are estimating. If I am given the total number of skiers and how many skiers can fit on one chair, I'm trying to find the chairs. That sounds like I'm doing a division problem. I'm gonna do 238 divided by four. But when we're estimating, when I'm estimating with division, I have to think about compatible numbers, right? I'm rounding to numbers that I can easily do the math with. So let's think about multiples of four. 
Four can't go into two, but it can go into 23. The closest multiple of four to 23 is going to be 24, right? Four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24. 24 is the closest. And then that eight that we didn't use becomes a zero. So I know with 240 divided by four. Well, this division is easy to do. I'm going to do 24 divided by 4. 24 divided by 4 is 6. But I have this 0 that I didn't use at the end. So I end up with 60. So the best estimate would be 60 chairs. 60 chairs would be the best estimate. So remember, when we're estimating with division, we've always got to use compatible numbers. Let's look at the next question. Number 14. Raymond Elementary sponsors a math competition for 65 students. During, during the competition, the students work a total of 7,475 problems in four hours. Each student works the same number of problems. How many problems did each student work? Well, the important information that I need to look at here is I have the total number of students right at that math competition, 65, and that they solved 700 I'm sorry, 7,475 problems. And we need to know how many does each student work. So the information that I don't need is the four hours. That information is irrelevant. We do not need it. So if I'm given the total number of problems and the total number of students, I want to know how many each student, every one student worked. That sounds like a division. I'm going to do 7,475 divided by 65. Well, 65 cannot go into 7, but it can go into 74, right? 65 would go into 74 exactly once, right? So you could either, you know, write your multiples of 65 on the side, estimate 65 to be either like 60 or 70 to figure out how many times it would go into these numbers. So 65 is only going to go into 74 one time. 1 times 65 is 65. When I subtract, I get 9. So 65 can't go into 9, but it can go into 97, right? Well, how many times could 65 go into 97? We can add 65 plus 65 to figure out how many times that would go in, right? 130, that's too big, right? So 65 is only going to go into 97 once. 1 times 65 is 65, just like last time. And we subtract and we get 32. Well, 65 can't go into 32, but it can go into 325. Well, how many times? Let's think about it. Let's kind of round um, 60 to, uh, 65 to 70, and we can count by 70s until we get close to 325. Well, I've got 70, 140, 210, 280, 350. That's probably too big. So let's do 280. That was 70 times 4. So let's try to do 65 times 4. Two hundred sixty. That seems like a little bit too small, right? So let's try 65 times 5. Remember, this kind of division we're doing, dividing by two-digit uh, two digit numbers, there ends up being a lot of just kind of guessing and checking, and that's totally fine. Well, 325 is 65 times 5 exactly, right? So 65 is going to go into 325 exactly 5 times. 5 times 65 is 325. I subtract and I get 0. So 115 problems is how many problems each student work on on their own. So 115 would be my answer. Let's look at the next one. I only got two more. All right. So number 15, to find her portion of the dinner bill, Dana used her calculator. Her calculator display showed 30.6666666 repeating, right? What is Dana's portion of the bill rounded to the nearest cent? So our nearest cent is the hundredths place. Anytime we're dealing with, you know, cents, you know, change, coins, right? That's going to go to the hundredths place. So let's look at my 
30 point six. How many sixes we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, eight. So we got a bunch of sixes, right? We're wanting to know the hundredths place. Well, the hundredths place is here, right? Because my first decimal, this six right there, would be tenths, and so the next one would be hundredths. So when I'm rounding to the hundredths place, I've got to look at the number next to it, to the right, which is my thousandths place, to see if it's going to round up or down. Remember our rules from rounding. Zero to four rounds down, and five to nine rounds up. Well, this six in the thousands place falls in the five to nine category, right? So that means it's going to round our other six up. So this six becomes a seven. All of these other sixes go away. Everything to the right goes away. So my six in the hundreds place turns into a seven. All my other numbers stay the same. So everything in front stays the same, behind it goes away. So I end up with 30 and 67 hundredths which would be $30.67. Let's look at our final question. Number 19. Kara had $100 to spend for school clothes. She bought a skirt for $33.76, two shirts for $10.35 each, and a pair of shoes for $23.65. She, she spent the rest of the money for a belt. How much money did Kara's belt cost? So we're trying to figure out how much money is left over, right? Because she said that she spent the rest on that belt, right? But it says about, about is important. So let's look at our answers. We've got $22, $33, $67, and $43. So it sounds like they just rounded and got rid of our decimals. They got rid of our change and rounded it to the nearest whole dollar. So the nearest $1. So that's what we're going to do. Let's look at our skirt. So our skirt was $33.76, right? So let's think about what that's in between. $33.76 is in between $33 and $34. Well, $0.76 cents is going to make it closer to $34, right? So our skirt, we would round to $34. Now, those two shirts are $10.35 each. So is $10.35 closer to $10 or is it closer to $11? It's going to be closer to $10, right? But remember, she bought two shirts. So that's two $10. $10 per shirt. And she bought a pair of shoes for $23.65. Well, is $23.65 closer to $23 or is it closer to $24? It's going to be closer to $24, right? So $24. So these are all my amounts that I've got to add up. So I've got 4 plus 0 plus 0 plus 4 is 8. 3 plus 1 is 4. Plus 1 is 5. Plus 2 is 7. So I end up with that she spent $78. But that's not what the question was asking. How much money did her belt cost? And she spent the rest of the money on the belt. So she started off with $100, right? So we're going to do $100 minus $78. Well, if I do that, I end up with $22. So her belt would have cost $22. So these are the kind of questions that you can expect on our quarter test. So our quarter test review, we're going to do half of it today the other half on Monday, and there are going to be questions that are extremely similar to our quarter test. Our quarter test is actually has questions that are very similar to all the unit tests that we've taken. So that's all going to cover place value, expanded form, expanded notation, adding and subtracting with decimals, multiplying and dividing with decimals, and then PEMDAS order of operations as well. So we just did five questions together. So y'all are going to do the other 15 on your own. And we will review some of the questions together when we meet back up for our live Google Meets later on today. Let me know if y'all have any questions and have a great weekend, guys. Bye.